I suppose that you could sum up my experience with motherhood thus far in just one word, and that word is waiting. And allow me to clarify that is not the declaration of an eight-month pregnant woman suffering from sciatica pain and, yes, even stretch marks. You see, my career arrived long before my husband did, and even after he stepped onto the scene, there would be months of doctor's appointments and infertility treatments before that sought-after title of mom was even within my reach and within my grasp. Once it was, it felt like a whole new waiting game had begun. As thrilled and blessed and fortunate as I felt, knowing our infertility journey had finished with the happy ending that we had both hoped and prayed for, I now felt a new kind of impatience and even at times a sort of discouragement as I wondered how long I would have to wait before my, quote, mother gene flipped on. I remember seeing those double solid lines on the pregnancy test and making the very happy phone call to my husband and then sitting on the edge of the bed and just feeling, waiting and absorbing the elation of the moment, absorbing the gratitude, but also trying to gauge if my motherhood seed had in fact been planted. I gave that very same pause after I heard our baby girl's heartbeat for the very first time. I remember not being sure if it was the baby's heartbeat or if it was my own that I was hearing. The anticipation was palpable. But once the thundering drum inside my own chest cavity calmed just a bit, there was that pause. Am I a mother now, I wondered? This question has crossed my mind again and again over these last several months. When we heard those words, it's a girl. When I opened gift after gift at my baby shower. When I felt the electrifying shock fondly referred to as the sciatica nerve, I would wait for it. Was I a mother now? As my belly grew and grew, that question grew into an almost unsettling insecurity. I didn't feel like I was flaring or gushing or grinning as loud and proud as a mother should, did I have the mother gene? Could I really be that mom? The answer came at, the, at an unexpected time and in an unexpected place. I was actually standing in my closet getting dressed for the day when my eyes caught hold of a picture that was hanging just above me on the wall. That picture had been in place my entire pregnancy and long before that, but in that very moment, that picture took on a whole new meaning. Staring back were the faces of my mom, my grandma, and her mom, a three-generation lineup of the women who had helped to mother me through their three lifetimes. And in that moment, it hit me hard. The mother gene I was waiting for wasn't something to suddenly appear or develop. The mother gene was already within me, thanks to their shining examples of legacy and their shining examples of love. A mother is a source of joy, even when faced with pessimistic attitude, like the time my own mom called me out to open our traditional Christmas Eve gift. I put up a fuss and I told her I didn't even need to open it, as I knew what was wrapped inside. They always gave us pajamas. Rather than scold my sass, I distinctly remember her picking me up in a bear hug, swinging me around and around in my room, and laughing joyfully. A mother is a source of joy, and I think I can be a source of joy too. A mother is a teacher, even when she doesn't have all of the answers. Like the time I asked my grandma Jo, an excellent cook, to help me make biscuits for 4-H to enter in the big county fair. She immediately agreed, but she failed to tell me that she didn't have a lot of confidence in the art of biscuit making. But with my blue ribbon on the line, she agreed to help without any hesitation. And when I showed up that day, sack of flour in hand, I was greeted, yes, by my grandma, but also by four of her very closest friends, also mothers. They had all been enlisted to help little old me make a blue ribbon biscuit for the county fair. A mother is a teacher, even when she doesn't have all of the answers. I don't have all of the answers, but I can be a teacher too. A mother is someone who selflessly puts family first, always. Like my great grandma Merle, who made a dedicated effort to instill lasting family traditions that we still carry on today. Every Easter, for example, we find ourselves on the slope of Little Mountain in northern Utah, rolling hard-boiled eggs down the hill. Now, I don't know why we do it, but every year we do. And every year it's a small and silly reminder of my great grandma's sacrifice to selflessly put her family first on every holiday, at every meal, and in every situation. I can put my family first too. 
Now let me be perfectly clear, I am not trying to claim right to a club that I am not officially a part of yet. I'm not trying to pin on a badge prematurely or undermine the invaluable mother growing experiences I know lie ahead. But I've stopped searching for the mother switch, stopped waiting for it to turn on because I've decided it's already on. I've stopped waiting for the gene to develop because it's already within me. I, in fact, can finally stop waiting and start being. Because like the beautiful, loving mothers who went before me, I, too, was meant to be a mother. <laughs>